Yo book nerds, I finished reading Carmilla by Joseph Sheridan Le Fanu and I loved it. This was just a short novella. It was barely over a hundred pages and it was wonderful. This is a vampire story, if you can't tell by the bats on the front of the cover. And this actually inspired Bram Stoker's Dracula. I always had the misconception that Dracula was like the first vampire story. And when I heard that Carmilla was the inspiration for Dracula, I had to read it. I've never read Dracula, but I really want to but I thought it would be good to read this first so I can see where Dracula gets its inspiration from when I do finally read it. So let's talk about this book. First of all, let me say this story was first written in the 1800s. It does not read that way. Honestly, if you would have handed me this book and told me that it was written today, I would have believed that it was a modern novel. It felt very modern to me. The writing was easy to understand, it flowed well, and if you're new to classics, I definitely think this would be a great place to start. It was just extremely easy to read and understand. On that note though, I did not like the footnotes in this edition. The footnotes in this edition, I felt were awful. <laughs> I'm sorry to the editor. But um, some of the footnotes had spoilers in them, so they ruined some of the plot for me. And some of the footnotes were just way out there. Like footnotes to me should just explain the context that's needed for whatever is happening in that particular part of the story. And there were quite a few footnotes in here that were like the editor's own ideas added into the story, or at least I don't know where she got them. For example, at one point the story is talking about a woods, and the story just says it's a woods, and the editor has a footnote and says that there are fairies and goblins and witches and all these other things in these woods, when the text itself never has anything that supports that, and I don't know if there are outside sources, other books written by Joseph Sheridan Le Fanu that talks about that sort of thing. Um, but if so, the editor should have referenced where she got that information because it definitely wasn't in this text. And so it really felt like she was just adding her own ideas to this story. And I really did not like it. I did not like the footnotes at all in this edition. They just seem to take away from the actual story. So if you get this edition, my advice is don't read the footnotes. You really don't need them anyway because the story reads very smoothly. And so just skip the footnotes. <laughs> but overall, I loved this book. It was very creepy. It, it wasn't very scary, I will say. Um, but it's kind of hard to scare me. But there were definitely scenes that were creepy and it was like, ooh, and it kept me reading. So if you don't know about this story, um, basic overview is that our main character's name is Laura and she lives with her dad in this big manor house in the country. And one day this carriage like crashes outside of their house and this girl that was in the carriage, um, stays with them while her mother goes off on some mysterious errand. We don't know what she's going to do, um, but since her daughter was like injured in this crash, Laura and her father say that they will take care of her and keep her there until her mom comes back. And the girl that's injured, her name is Carmilla. And Carmilla is strange. She is very beautiful and very nice, but she's also strange. She has strange habits and she says things that are just not quite right. And so that's basically the setup for this story. So now I'm going to get into the spoilers. So if you don't want to know any more, stop watching here <laughs> because I really want to talk some more about this. But this book is so short, so it's really hard to do without spoilers. So Carmilla is obviously 
the vampire. But this kind of vampire is different than any vampire that I'm used to. Um, they don't actually say she turns into a bat, even though there are bats on this cover. She does kind of change forms every now and then, but we don't specifically know what kind of form she's in. Um, so that's a little different. She seems to be able to come out in daylight, um, but she always waits until like the afternoon to come out. She like hides away during most of the day. Um, and the main thing that was very different is that it doesn't seem like a vampire bite is what turns you into a vampire. It seems that in this version of a vampire, if you die when a vampire is feeding on you, then you are likely to turn into a vampire, but not everyone does turn into a vampire. So it's, it's a little bit different, um, but it was still very fascinating. And it makes me wonder what Dracula will be like because I obviously haven't read the book, but I have ideas in my head of what Dracula is. So it'll be interesting to see if I'm right or wrong. And it'll be interesting to see what influence this kind of a vampire had on that kind of a vampire. The other thing that I found very interesting, um, especially for the time that this book came out, is that we have a female vampire and a female main character who the vampire is obsessed with. And so there's a little bit of homoerotica to this novella because it seems like at least the way I interpret vampires, it seems like there's always a sexual nature to vampires. I'm not talking romantic vampires like Twilight. I'm talking about like the desire that vampires have to kill people, to suck their blood. Um, it's almost a sexual desire. They need it and they'll take it. It's very easy to compare vampires to rape because they take without consent and it's yeah there is definitely like sexual desire that is tied in with vampires at least that is the way i read it and so you can see carmilla like loving and lusting after laura and laura finds it uncomfortable but she's also intrigued by this too. And so it's just interesting for the time that this was published that we have a woman and a woman. And so I really enjoyed that different dynamic. The one problem that I had with this book was that I feel like Laura, the main character, she was, I just think she was kind of dumb because some things just seemed so obvious and they just went straight over her head. And so that was a little bit annoying. Sometimes I just wanted to like smack Laura and be like, wake up, what is wrong with you? But maybe that's just me. <laughs> maybe it's because of the footnotes that spoiled some things for me. Yeah, sometimes I just wanted to smack Laura and be like, get away from Carmilla, she's trying to kill you. But overall, the book was very enjoyable, very satisfying. The ending did kind of leave you hanging a little bit. So again, spoiler warning, because I'm going to talk about the ending this time. So at the end, they catch Carmilla and they end up killing her. And that saves Laura from dying because Carmilla had been feeding on Laura, but she hadn't died yet. Um, and so Laura will recover and theoretically she won't turn into a vampire, right? Because she didn't die when a vampire was feeding on her. Um... But one of Laura's companions did die when Carmilla was feeding on her because Carmilla kills a few other people in this story. And they don't say if her companion turns into a vampire or not. So you're kind of left to wonder if this other girl will become a vampire now and if the story will then continue on with a new vampire. But overall, very enjoyable book. I recommend it, especially if you're looking to get into classics, especially classic horror, because this is very short and very easy to read. I'm so glad I read it during spooky season. So in a previous video, I had thought about reading Dracula after reading Carmilla, but I've decided not to do that because I want to wait a little bit and 
put some distance between the two vampire stories so I don't like blend them too much together. Um, so I might wait until next year to read Dracula. Um, but I don't really want to start another book for Spooky Season since Spooky Season's almost over. And so I was looking ahead to November and usually I participate in nonfiction November. And I had been thinking of reading Defiance this year for nonfiction November, but I'll be honest, I looked at Defiance. I was not in the mood to start that right now. I got out all of my other nonfiction books that I own that I haven't read yet. None of them made me like want to grab one of them and read them. And so I don't think I will be participating in nonfiction November this year. And the main reason for that is because of grad school. I am already reading so much nonfiction for school. Like I just need my outside of school reading to be fun and light and not something that I need to think too much about. And so I just, I just can't do another nonfiction right now. I'm reading too much nonfiction for class. It's just, it's not appealing to me right now. Maybe next year it might be different, but this year I just, I can't. <laughs> so I'm not going to participate in nonfiction November this year. So that got me to start thinking already about Christmas. And in a previous video, I had thought about reading A Christmas Carol during the Christmas season. But that book is tiny and I know it is way too soon to start that because I would definitely finish before we're anywhere near Christmas. And so I just, I'm not going to read that either this year, most likely. Maybe I will later, but not right now. So what am I going to read? This took me forever, honestly, to figure out what I was going to read next because I just went in circles for honestly like an hour, actually over an hour, I'm trying to figure out what to read next. So I've actually settled on a reread. I'm going to reread Little Women by Louisa May Alcott. And the reason I'm doing this is because I feel like this is a Christmassy, wintry read because it's very large and I tend to go for a larger book during the winter months and it also opens with a Christmas scene and if I remember correctly it ends with a Christmas scene um but it's been a long time since I read this so my edition of Little Women also includes Good Wives and I've read this before so I've read Little Women slash Good Wives before but I never went on to read Little Men or Joe's Boys. So that is my plan. I'm going to read Little Women slash Good Wives and then I'm going to read Little Men and then Joe's Boys. That is the current plan. I'm excited to reread this. I, I don't even know when I read this the first time. I've only read this once before. I feel like I was probably in junior high and so yeah it's been a minute. And I actually haven't seen the new, it's not really new anymore, but the new movie adaptation with Emma Watson, I haven't seen that. So it might be fun to read this and then watch that movie for the first time. I have seen a different movie adaptation with my grandma because we love to watch old movies together. And so maybe I'll go watch that with her again too because it's been a while since I've watched that one with her. But yeah, this is my plan. I actually, I have my bookmark in it, but I haven't actually started it yet. So this is going to be my next read. I'm very excited because I remember loving this. And then I'm excited to dive into the other two afterwards. So if you've read Carmilla, let me know your thoughts on this in the comments if you liked it as much as me. And if you've read Little Women, also comment and tell me what you thought of it. Don't, you don't have to worry about spoilers because I've read both of these. So yeah, I'm very excited about my next choice. I hope you guys are having a wonderful spooky season. Halloween is only a week away. I can't wait to take my daughter out trick-or-treating. She's going to be Tinkerbell this year. And so it's going to be so much fun. I will talk to you guys next week on Halloween. Keep reading your spooky reads, even though I've already moved on to other things this year. And don't forget to like and subscribe to my channel. Thanks for talking books with me.